The extensive prairies within the base of the crater are home to another of Gorongoro's herbivores, the Cape Buffalo. These herds, comprised of as many as 2,000 head of buffalo, are led by an old female, while the males protect the rear guard. The buffalo's poor hearing and eyesight mean it has to depend on its acute sense of smell to detect the presence of enemies. They raise their heads continuously in order to pick up the messages carried through the air to their nostrils. Despite the group's painstaking vigilance, there are actually very few predators that offer them any serious threat. The Cape Buffalo is really a stretch on the limits of the lion's hunting abilities. Its size and strength make it a very dangerous animal, and no predator would choose to attack one if it had another smaller choice of prey. In the rainy season, however, these huge herds harbor many calves amongst their numbers, and these calves are indeed vulnerable. It is the lionesses that do the hunting, but on this occasion they don't seem too interested. Nevertheless, the buffaloes remain on guard. This time, it is a male lion that has taken the initiative. Although his efforts have been rewarded this time, only 8% of a single lion's hunting results in success. This percentage increases to 33% in group hunts. Three families of lions live in Gorongoro. Their interaction with lion populations from the outside is almost non-existent and inbreeding is frequent. Genetic diversity has reduced by 40% compared to that in the neighboring Serengeti and the reduction in the number of cubs in each litter is beginning to seem indicative of an increasing weakness of the species. In the world of birds, hunters and the hunted also live side by side, and the abdim stork has its airborne version of the lion to contend with, the eagle. A rapacious eagle has captured a young stork. Once the prey has become overcome, the eagle has to eat as quickly as possible. On the ground, the eagle is vulnerable and may be seen and attacked by other predators. Having satisfied his appetite, the eagle will seek the protection of the trees and will even leave his catch behind if it is too difficult to take it with him. The monotony of the vast open plains of the savanna is only broken by a handful of acacias used as watchtowers by leopards and birds of prey. In the southeast of the crater, however, the landscape is occupied by the Larai forest. The forest's protective acacias are home to an enormous variety of fauna. As well as offering refuge from predators, the forest also offers a permanent supply of food. Amongst the many creatures inhabiting the forest are the two species of primates to be found in Gorongoro. The baboons cover the entire forest in search of food and do not usually climb the trees except in order to escape their enemies or to sleep. They are usually to be found in groups of between 30 and 100 individuals which are governed by a complex social organization.
The fights among the young are frequent and help establish the pecking order amongst the males. A mere demonstration of strength is usually enough to convince the weaker contender to admit defeat, and such fights rarely lead to bloodshed. The young are watched over and protected by the whole group. Such diligent vigilance stems from the fact that the female baboons are not fertile until the age of four, and also because they feed their young for a long period of time, thus spacing out the birth rate. This puts a premium on keeping infant mortality to an absolute minimum. The ververt monkeys prefer the more open areas of the forest where they feed on fruit, bulbs and roots. As opposed to the baboons, the small monkeys' only possible form of defense is escape, and they are attacked by both land predators and birds of prey who do not hesitate in robbing them of their food. Permanently on the alert while they eat, their acute hearing enables them to locate the kite even before it's visible. The powerful talons of these birds are a sufficiently convincing argument against fighting to keep the food. The best thing is to leave them to it and to run for cover. <laughs> <laughs> 